the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 197. Be on the lookout for a bank note issued by the Bank of England. This is a one-pound note that was stolen by bank bandits who held up the Belvedere branch of the Security First National Bank at 8.30 a.m. this day. These men are armed and dangerous. That's all. Rolls and clips. Several millions of girls and boys will return to school in the next two weeks to study what may be briefly summed up as the great truths discovered by others. To learn to apply in their own lives the thoughts, discoveries, and experience of those who have specialized in their respective fields. It is this same fundamental principle of education, this desire to profit by the experience of others, which is the guiding light of the business world. Be guided then by the significant fact that the officials of 30 leading cities and counties throughout California have specified the exclusive use of a certain product. That more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other special equipment are powered by Rio Grande cracked gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand. We invite you to study this fact. Learn its truth for yourself. And then, profiting by the experience of others, apply it to the life of your own motor. Give your automobile the police car performance it deserves by consistently using Rio Grande Craft. The experience of those who drive the most is that it has the takeoff of a china clipper, the pickup of a modern machine gun, and the long mileage, abundant reserve power, and hurricane speed which police demand in their emergency driving. Last year, your California emergency equipment drove over 55 million miles in the greatest proof of gasoline superiority ever made for Western Motors. Buy your gasoline intelligently, logically. Get police car performance for your car at no greater cost when you pull into your Rio Grande dealers tomorrow morning. The facts regarding the case you were to hear tonight were taken in the main from the confidential files of the police department. And we have therefore asked Captain C.B. Horrell, acting night chief of police, to prepare a foreword for our program. Captain Horrell. Good evening, friends. Bank robbery is at once the most dangerous and the most lucrative of criminal activities. The criminal strikes with suddenness, and his ap apprehension is one of the most difficult tasks facing a peace officer. Only in rare cases are police informed of a contemplated bank robbery in time to prevent its consummation. There is, however, one fundamental fact that sooner or later, though it may be months or years, every criminal is eventually brought to justice and made to realize that however lucrative his crime appeared to be at the time, it nevertheless failed to pay. A few facts proving this point will be reserved for the end of the program. Just as the sun was beginning to redden the August sky, a bakery wagon pulled to a stop in front of a store on Whittier Boulevard. Two men left the driver's seat and climbing into the apparently empty truck, closed the doors. I feel like Simple Simon sitting around here in a pie wagon. Yeah, I'd hate to tell you what you look like. Always full of wit and humor, ain't you, pal? Shut up and keep your eye glued to that peephole. Think anybody comes to this place this early? Yeah, that's what we're here to find out. That's too dark to see much. We can see when anybody goes inside. Any idea how many people work there? Hey, what do you think I fixed up this here truck for? We're going to case this joint till we find out how many work there. And when we find that out? We'll take the joint. How much do you think there is in there? Enough to last us as long as we live. That'd be an awful lot. Don't worry. It's there, all right. Quiet. There goes an old lady into the place. Yeah. Yeah, I see her. She's got a key. She's going inside. And probably the scrub woman. Oh, I see. They locked the grill behind them, eh? Yeah, cautious, ain't they? Yeah, uh, stop saying anything. Oh, what are you so grouchy about this morning? Jane throw you out last night? Yeah, uh, pipe down. 
How long has that game been in there? Uh, five minutes about. Here comes somebody else. Uh, nope. He pressed it up. He don't work there. How do you know? I ain't never seen him when I went in there. Man, don't say ain't, that. Ain't, yeah, I know, I know. Listen, how many people have you seen in there? Oh, I'd say to ten. Hmm. Any place to put that many people? Sure, lots of room. Here comes two men. Yeah, that's a guy named Johnson on the right. I don't know the other one. Are you sure this job is as easy as you said it was? Ah, it's a pipe. All you do is saw. Yeah, here comes another guy. That's uh, three men and the old lady, huh? Yeah, it leaves another man and a couple of dames. I don't like to work a job like this. Where there's dames? You never can tell when they'll what they'll do in a pinch. Yeah, you can't tell no other time, neither. Hey, look, I think it'd be a good idea for you to get out in there when the place opens up and get the names of the guys what works there. Then we can figure out the best time. Okay. I'll come back about noon. I'll find out from the teller I always talk to. Now, don't rouse their suspicions, man. Don't worry about that angle. Let's scan. We'll come back tomorrow morning. I hate to get up this early. Oh, you're too lazy. <laughs> Someday you're going to be where you'll have to get up. How'd you like that? Still scared to do this job? Me scared? Hey, listen, punk, I don't know the meaning of the word. Well, stick around. You'll learn it. Did you get that list? Yeah, right here. No, we're going to put down the time when these guys get going to work, see? I checked them up on that armored truck, and it gets here on the 14th and on the uh, 30th. Yeah, and we get in there on the 31st, is that it? Yeah, you guessed it. That's Monday. Yeah, day after the morning. You got all the stuff ready? Yep, it's in the ash. Well, what plates are we using? The ones we got from that guy up in Stockton. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget his face when we took that car away from him. Yeah, <laughs> and he'll probably never forget yours when you lost that there handkerchief. Ah, oh, he didn't see me much. You're going to flash that pan of yours once too often. Somebody's going to recognize you someday. I'll take care of me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> morning of August 31st, 1931, Joseph Fisher was walking along Arizona Street near Whittier Boulevard when from a dark area away between two buildings came a peculiar sound. He stopped and listened. All right, kid. What's so interesting around here at 4 o'clock in the morning? Huh? Well, I was just going home. Yeah? You don't happen to live in this building, do you? Oh, no, sir. All right, then you've seen too much. Come on back here. Well, what are you going to do with me? We'll decide that later. Go on, go on, get back in there. Well, what's the idea of bringing that mug back here? He's seen too much. What are you going to do with him? Oh, keep him back here in the dark till you get that bar sword, if you ever do. Yeah, so you're getting smart again, huh? No, I'm just tired of waiting. Well, it's, uh, it's about through now. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, good. All right, kid. Come on, you're going inside. Oh, now listen, mister. I don't want to get mixed up in this. You ain't mixed up enough. What did I tell you about that, there ain't? Oh, forget it. Come on, kid. Climb through this window. No! No, what the devil's wrong with you? I fell over a trash. Ah, uh, that kid's going to get us into trouble yet. Ah, uh, never mind, Hen. Give me a hand if here. If you weren't so fat, you wouldn't have so much trouble getting through the windows. Ah, uh, yeah. And if you didn't talk so much, you'd be better off, too. I still don't see why we couldn't stick this joint up in the daytime. Because you dope, we can get more this way. All right, watch out for that can. Well, more than I'm going to jump down. Now, let's turn on the light. Get away from there, you hophead. You want every cop in town to be rushing in here? Ah, oh, nuts. Who's going to see it? Listen, you want money in this job, see? You do as I tell you or else. Else what? You haven't forgotten that bank messenger, have you? He started an argument, too. Keep quiet, you sap. You want this kid to get the lowdown on that job? All right, let's get busy. Hey, where's that there uh, basin bit? Right here. Where are you going to pour the holes? In this petition. In boot one. Well, will you be able to see the lobby from here? Yeah, all of it. Say, this is the bank. You guys ain't going to hold it up, are you? Don't say you ain't. Well, are you? What do you think? I think you are. All right. Tie him up, Jim. Throw him out there washroom. Hey, now, wait a minute. You don't have to tie me up. 
I'll be quiet. Yeah, we'll still tie you up, see? Get that wire, Jim. All right, kid. Keep still now. Ow! Don't get it so tight. I'm not hurting you. Pipe down. You got them holes bored yet, Jack? Yeah. Well, what now? Well, we just wait here till they come in. Then we start entertaining them. getting here in a minute. Quiet. Somebody's at the front door. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's the janitor's. Okay. Get up there and meet her. All right. Better take a look at that kid. Okay, lady. Just come on in and don't make no noise. Oh, what is this? Who are you? Answering an order, a stick up, and none of your business. Close that door. Uh, yes, sir. All right. Now go on and get to work. Act like nothing was wrong, see? If anybody comes, you keep quiet. But my, my daughter's coming by here in a few minutes. She's going to help me this morning. Well, when she comes, let her in. If you try any funny stuff, I'll let you have it. Oh, I, I won't do anything I ought to. Well, where are you going? I, I, I'm just going to pick up this paper here on the floor. Oh, oh it, it's wood. Uh, shaving. Oh! What's the matter with you? Oh, those eyes. They're looking right at me. Of <laughs> course they are. That's my partner in there. He's inside that booth. Now look, you. Get busy, see? And don't be yelling your head off again. Yes, sir. I, I guess I'll just sweep out the lobby. Go ahead. Who's that? That's my daughter. She... Let her in. What's the matter, Mom? Say, who's this guy? Settle down, sister. This is a hold-up, see? You want to be quiet or we got to tie you up? You're not going to tie me up. I'll really raise a rumpus if you try to. How about it, Jack? Oh, nice to her. Tell her to keep quiet and get to work. Say, you can't talk to me that way. That's what you think. Shut up and go to work. You can't boss me around. I ain't Don't no... Don't say you ain't. Go on and get to work. You heard him. Better get started. Pray on him. Hey, get those front blinds down, Jim. Let them down, you. Yes, sir. Make it snappy. Okay, get the other one down. Oh, but so in there... Get it down. I don't want any signals around here. Okay. Now, listen, you stick around. You might as well settle down, because we got a long wait, see? We're staying here till the manager comes, so just relax. One by one, the employees of the bank came to work. As each one entered the door, he was met by the calm but dangerously resolute Wilson. Each person was taken to a booth in the rear of the bank and kept prisoner. At three minutes past eight, the manager of the bank arrived. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Clyburn. Uh, good morning, Effie. Uh, nice to see you all this bright summer morning. It's cloudy. Uh, oh, oh, yes, so it is, so it is. I hadn't noticed. How did you like the rain yesterday? Rain? Rain? Why, it didn't rain yesterday, Effie. Didn't it? What's wrong with you, Effie? You too, Mrs. Clyburn. You both act peculiar. Yeah, perhaps I can explain it. This is a hold-up. Uh, a what? A hold-up. We've been expecting you, see. Won't you come in here this way, back this way, and open the vault? Uh, man, you, you can't get away with this. Uh, that's a matter of opinion. Now, if you'll just open that vault, we'll be on our way. Oh, very well, only... Wait a minute. Are there any burglar alarms that tested that vault? Well, uh, no, uh, none at all. The siren outside is all we have. Yeah, so I figured. Okay, get started. Let's see. Uh, three times right to 46. Left twice to 50. Back right to... No, uh... stop your muttering and get it open. No, no, don't be nervous. It'll be open in a moment. Ah, there we are. Mm. All right. Now open up them money boxes. I can't. I haven't any keys. Listen, don't hand me that. Get them open. But I'm telling you the truth. Here, you take these keys and try them yourself. Well, who's got the key? Well, each teller has his own key. Okay. Hey, Jim, send in those tellers out here in pairs. Okay. Come on, you birds. Get going. All right, I'm going. All right, come on. Get in there and open those boxes and then get out. Of course, yes. Yes, sir. Make a snappy. 
Well, I get back in the booth. They took him. Okay. You two, get gone. Uh, yes, sir. All right. Good morning. Uh, you boys must have worked in a bank before. Yeah, maybe. Get in there and unlock your box. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are you going to take all of it? <laughs> and how? Hey, put it in this here suitcase. Uh, came prepared, didn't you? We're always prepared, see, punk. Get busy and stop gabbing. Yes, sir. Well, there she is. All of it. Hey, Jim, bring in that gang and put them in here. The woman, too? I said all of them. Okay, okay. Come on, you mug. You too, lady. Hurry it up. The rush, mister. You've been here all morning. That's why we want to get started. Somebody in this bank has cold hands. Okay, okay. Shut that inside door and go get the car. Uh, so I'm going to shut the big door, are you? Sure, why not? Oh, it's suffocating. So what? Well, uh, I, I think you'll find it a little difficult. You uh, you see, I I threw the tumblers again. Uh, force of habit, you know. Yeah? If I thought you did that on purpose, I'd slug you. Oh, you can't. We're locked in. Hey, you haven't got a key. Listen, wise guy, I'm squirming now, see? Make one move before I get going and I'll burn you. Get me? I'll send somebody around to let you out. Oh, don't bother. We'll make out. Uh, Williams, yes, uh, spring that lock. Yes, sir. Uh, John, get yes. my gun. See if you get a shot at them. Uh, freelance, uh, trip that siren. I'll try to see which way they went. Effie. The alarm was spread. Police and sheriff's deputies began arriving with the car load. Every road was blockaded. The man hunt was on. Telegraph wires and teletype circuits burned with descriptions of the men. Highway patrolmen checked car after car. License plates from every stolen car on the police records were checked against those seen on the bandit car. But no trace of the criminals was found. The getaway car was found, abandoned, with evidence that the bandits were clever men. No fingerprints had been left. A week passed. While the sheriff's office was checking every available lead, the Los Angeles police were endeavoring to connect the bandits with known criminals. Then one day, in the office of Captain McCaleb of the robbery detail... Captain, we got that girl outside. The one we think is tied up with that Dukeman gang. The one who shot that market messenger. Oh, all right. Bring her in, Tucker. You know, I've got a hunch about that girl. Come in here, will you, miss? Captain McCaleb, this is... Uh, what did you say your name was? I didn't. Let's make it Jane Rowe. That's as good as any. All right. Sit down. We'd like to ask you a few questions about some of your associates. You haven't anything on me. Now, let's not begin on that key. We know what we've got on you. But we're more interested in what we've got on some of the people you know. Roy Wilson, for instance. I don't know any Roy Wilson. Make it Gant, then. Roy Gant. I still don't know him. You don't know Emmett Perkins, either, do you? No, I don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. I see you're going to be a little difficult. Now, maybe if I tell you a few things, you'll feel different. You'll get nothing out of me, well, Copper. Maybe. But if I was a girl and a fellow was giving me the runaround, I'd do something about it. Say, what are you driving at? Oh, nothing, nothing. You wouldn't be interested in it anyway. You don't know either of the people involved, either Perkins or Wilson. So why waste time? Maybe it isn't a waste of time. Well, what else could it be? Why should I take up my time telling you what I know about Perkins chiseling if you don't even know the guy? Who says he's chiseling? I do. I happen to know that he's been spending money like a drunken sailor on a girl. And it isn't you. If I thought you were telling the truth, I... You'd what? Well, I'd spill what I know about him. Oh, so you do know him. I didn't say that. I do happen to know where he got that money. He got it from that market messenger that was shot last May, didn't he? Market messenger? <laughs> ah, that's rich. You think he shot that guy? He hasn't got nerve enough to shoot anybody. He's just a big bluff. He got that money from that Belvedere Garden bank holdup last week. What? Sure. He stuck up that bank. Emmett and Roy Gant, you call him Wilson. They pulled that job. Oh, why should I cover up for him, the rat? I stick to that bird through all the time he's rotting and fulsome. And this is the thanks I get. He robbed the bank and spends the dough on some other dame. Well, he can't do that to me. I'll give him something else to think about. Look, Copper... Let me out of here, and I'll show you where that money's buried, at least as near as I can. You'll show us? I'll show you as near as I can. You drive me out to the L.A. riverbed near the stockyard. I'll show you how to find that money. Tucker, get Beeson and Graham. Tell them to meet me at the L.A. stockyard. All right. Get some iron rods about five feet long. Tell Molina and Anderson to bring the car around. We'll take this girl out there and see if she's telling the truth. All right. <laughs> Mr. 
And this is the place right here. Oh, how could anybody hide money on a street? No, oh, it isn't hidden here. This is where they parked when they brought me out here. They told me to wait right here. They were gone about two minutes and came back with a handful of money. Yeah? Which way did they go when they left you? Down toward the riverbed. Okay. Beeson, you and Graham take these rods and start out on the left there. Yes, sir. Punch them down in every spot that's been dug up recently till you find that money. Molina, you and Tucker work straight ahead here. All right, Captain. Now take the right side. Now don't pass up a spot. Okay. Okay. You found anything yet? Not yet. Now keep punching. Hey, boys, I've got a bite. Did you find it? I think so. Bring that shovel. Yes, sir. I was beginning to think we'd been given a bum steer. No, sir, I'm pretty sure this is it. Listen. Sounds like a box, all right. Yeah. Let's dig it up. Yes, sir, that's it. Hmm. Wonder how much is in it. Yeah, we'll know in a minute. Oh, it's fastened with wire. Say, that's the same kind of wire we found in the bank and in the car the bandits used. Well, looks like the girlfriend gave us the right tip. <clears throat> Ye gods, I didn't know there was that much money in the world. I still don't believe there is. How much you say is there? At least 20000 What are we going to do with it? Yeah, we're going to take it in and give it to Parker. We'll let him worry about taking care of it. Say, so you think we can get that girl to put the finger on Wilson and Perkins? Yeah, I've got a hunch that we can. Anyway, we're going to try that right now. You suppose she's still waiting for us? Yeah. She won't go far if she does decide to leave. I don't know. I had a hard time catching her in the first place. She's there all right, waiting patiently. Well, anyway, waiting. Well, I see you found it, boys. What next? You're going to show us where your boyfriend hangs out. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You knew too much about this job. They've got to hold you from now on. You're not going to run out on us now, lady. Say, what are you trying to do? Get me rubbed out? Who's going to rub you out? Emmett's gang. You mean Dean Deutschman's gang, don't you? I mean Emmett Perkins' gang. They're tough, I tell you. Yeah, so I've heard. Come on now, stop stalling. Where does Perkins live? If, if, if I tell you, will you give me a chance to get away before you take him? Sure, why not? All right. Drive out to 73rd and Central. He lives in a house next to the corner. If there's a bed sheet hanging on the porch... He won't be there. <laughs> What's the bed sheet for? Uh, his mother watches for cops. She sees anybody acting suspiciously, she hangs out a sheet. Emmett sees it and stays away. Thanks, lady. We'll watch for it. Oh, Clyde, let me out at this corner. Yes, sir. I'll get Beeson and Graham and go on out to 73rd. You take the girl back to the office and come on out. Okay, Captain. See you later. Uh, hurry back. What's up, Chief? We saw Clyde stop. Have you got the Tommy gun? Yeah. Let's get out to 73rd and Central. Don't stop until I tell you to. Okay. cops hanging around here. What are you mumbling about a bed sheet? That bed sheet hanging on the porch of that house down there. That means that our man won't be home. Wait a minute. Take it slow now. Is this the place where Perkins and Wilson hang out? Yeah. The fifth house down the street there. Hey, look. Somebody's taking that sheet down. Get set for some action, boys. If Perkins comes along, we're going to take him. Nothing could please me better. Watch it. Here comes a new car. Looks like it might be the boys we want. They did right well by themselves, didn't they? They're the ones, all right. Let's get them. So they want to play tag, do they? Give her the gun, Beeson. This is all she's got. Well, here's where we take a car over that hack. You got the tank, but not the tire. Well, we'll try it again. Look at that baby travel. You can gain another 50 feet on him. I think I can do it. Well, here's all she's able to do, Cap. Hold her steady. Yeah, looks like they're going to fight back. Can even get you, Cap? No, but I'm going to give them something to think about. I'm going to take out that window. Yeah, must have discouraged them. They're stopping. I get set to rush him, boy. All right. All 
all right, you monkeys. Reach for it. Get Wilson, Graham. Beeson, yeah. you take Perkins. Okay. Right. Come on, get out of that car. Come on, get Keep out. your hands where I can see them. Yeah, you're making a mistake, copper. I'll get you for this. That's what they all say, buddy, and I'm still here. And I'll be here when and if you ever get out of jail. Look me up sometime. If it's true what they say in the song, the merry-go-round broke down, then merry-go-round managers should have taken the tip of millions of motorists throughout the world. Followed the example of the managers of 52 railway systems, 150 major airlines, airports, and airplane plants, all of whom say, we use Sinclair motor oils exclusively because they do not break down. Sinclair stands up under the most punishing tests of extreme heat and excessive speeds because those two arch foes of motor efficiency, petroleum, jelly, and wax, have been entirely removed by a patented Sinclair process. And so, friends, take your car out of the merry-go-round class. Sinclairize for safety by asking for Sinclair Opaline at only 25 cents a quart the next time you drive in to your Rio Grande dealers for a refill. Better do it tomorrow morning when you wheel in for a tank full of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. And while there, be sure to ask for your free copy of the September issue of Calling All Cars News, just off the press. Read the thrilling and true story of the war on dope by Captain Chitwood. Striking mystery and detective stories. Pictures galore. Up-to-the-minute news of your radio and screen favorites. More of those intriguing brain befuddlers. It's waiting for you at your Rio Grande dealers, where motorists, wise, Sinclair eyes for safety with Sinclair motor oils, and stock their automobiles with police car performance. The ruling favorite of those who demand the best. And get it with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. And now once more... Captain Horrell. A check of the records of Wilson, known to the police as Roy Gant, and that of Perkins, disclosed that both were hardened criminals. Their friendship had originated while both were inmates of San Quentin Penitentiary, and both were on parole from that institution at the time of the bank robbery. Wilson and Perkins were identified on two theater holdups and several other burglaries and were bought, brought to trial on February the 2nd, 1932. After five days' trial, they changed their pleas to guilty and were sentenced to Folsom Penitentiary. Definitely, their life of crime did not pay. Thank you, Captain Horrell. Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation of broadcast 197 regarding a bank robbery. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rose and quit. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.